Hi, today I want to show you how easy it's now to create thermal models from Eagle designs. We created a new output EXIF to export the data and a new import wizard to read the data. Um, I'm taking a test board, it's called Beaglebone. It's a four layer board, it's not trivial. And I'm starting the export by selecting a proper ULP and I create a package which we then import. I close this part and we are starting with the import. I open an empty TRM model and say import wizard eagle take all the defaults and I will have to give a name for the new model <coughs> I call it eagle wizard English version and all the rest is done automatically it's reading the Gerber files, it's reading the drill files and the net list to create a three-dimensional thermal model. Now we are done. By the way, the set axis is stretched by a factor of five in order to be able to look in between the different layers and levels. And here we see the drill files. This is the correct button. And we have some placement. Those guys are quite odd. Megahertz, ohm. I'm going to delete them. The height of those pieces is about one meter. Um, should be cables or something like that. Now let's go through the menu items uh, to see what has been imported. Uh, first of all, the size of the board. This is the lower left corner in X and Y. This coordinate is 86 millimeters. That's this coordinate 54 millimeters. It's a six layer board. I'm sorry. This thickness must be a a mistake in the original data. Maybe the origin was a two-layer board and then it was extended to six layers. I'm taking the 200 value to make it symmetric. Then this looks a little bit small but we don't care. If you do this process manually you have to read in a Gerber file and click expose and what you get is a control view to check whether the complete port is really taken into account or if you are interested in a subframe, if that subframe is properly imported. Next step is to read the drill files. There is only one drill file here. Um, it's a plated through hole file. If there are buried or blind vias, those will appear in separate files and they can be treated in different way. Um, uh, reading the drill file, if I convert just for fun, we'll get a control plot of the file. As a result, you get a list of all the drilled holes. Uh, in total, we have 694. Doesn't matter whether they are uh, 69,000 holes for the calculation. It's the graphics which gets slower if we have a, a huge amount of drill files. All the data can be changed. You are able to change each diameter or change the plating thickness or filled or no, not filled, etc. It's also possible to create manually drilled holes by just typing analog numbers by, with a keyboard and if you want to create a pattern 
then press the button pattern box and create a, or an array of drilled holes. Next step is the mount tab. It's so to say providing the data for the placement. Data for the components come from IDF files. It's a pair of files EMN and EMP. Then we have another IDF reading for the pins. Pins are solid pins typically used for connectors. They will appear as cylinders. And then we have a special line for the net list. And all this is now pretty organized in a table. In a table starting with the components, ref desk, position size, etc. And now we see you can identify the net list. We have a net 3.3 volt dash Wi Fi. This is the net name. Then we have the name of the component and the identifier or number of the pad or pin in this component. For example, IC19, pad number one, pad number three. Now, this li these lines are representing tiny circles. These circles fit into the solder area. And let me show this on the right, right hand side. We filter for the top components. The pink layer is the top layer. I can select here, I see IC1. And if I manage to pick one of those, it's IC, net IC1-Y19, net name. Component name is IC1, and the pad name is Y-19. This is net ground, component IC1, pad name W18. To assign thermal data, we have two options. First, we select a component and assign watts. The watts you have to know. The system cannot tell you the watts. Say one watt here, say one watt there, and maybe two watts here because it's a big one. Those components can also be created from scratch if you want to do it. So with a draw, draw a rectangle, and we create a component or a circle or a cylinder. And it's also possible to move those around if it's necessary, and so on. Okay, now, what did we do? Ah, we see the ohm, and so we, we, I wanted to delete the ohms. So one option is to press the delete button in this right-hand part, or do it in this left-hand part, if I search for ohm, they are in alphabetic order. It's also possible to do it here or a multiple selection. The megahertz, right mouse button, delete selected rows. Yes, I want to delete. And now they, most of them should have disappeared. Okay, maybe we forgot where are the, the watts. There's a way to retrieve or to activate some SQL. We have IC1, IC22, and maybe I forgot to press the return key to, uh, to activate one watt here. So return, now it's, it's appearing here. Yeah, let us do a thermal simulation with standard conditions, say 20 degrees Celsius, room temperature, free convection. And I'm starting components only and press the start button.
it's already running. Total power 4 watts, 1 plus 1 plus 2. And after this initial phase, we start with the, with the solver. It's iterating something. And comes with the result 66 degrees Celsius. It's plotting automatic result images, which come for, for free. You don't have to do uh, individual post processing, but you can do if you want. And while plotting, we can watch the results. Here we see the, the two components. Top components, 61 degree, 65 degrees, 46 degree. It's pretty homogeneously heated. But we also can also look inside the PCB and see the influence of the top components on the bottom phase temperature. Okay, let's add some electric information. And this is current in in the nets and the principle is you release some amount of current in the net and destroy the same amount in the net so that the total is zero. Let's let's choose this those guys here. Sys under 5 volt. So I'm searching for sys underscore 5 volt star and I see all the members of this net. P9 is the pin. Let's take, let's assume it's just a mere fantasy value. In total, 10 amps as a, as a source. And now we are inventing some syn sinks. Suppose we have minus 2.5 here and minus 2.5 there. Oh, that's just 5. Oh, we have another two, minus 2.5. Okay, we distributed the 10 amps to IC12 and IC1. Okay, that's all. You can add either use the keyboard to enter the data or use an export and merge mechanism to export the list, modify the list in Excel, for example, and merge it or import it into this table. Oh, that's all I have to do. And I go back to calculate components with current. You will see in a moment why I'm typing a logbook note. The calculation has two steps. First step is to calculate the voltage drop or the joule heating in that net. The localized joule heating is then added to the localized power of the components to give a total temperature. Joule heating is creating 4.5 watts, which is a little bit high, but it's of the order of the watts in the components. The electric calculation is already done. We can see the voltage drop on top. It's quite boring. Oh, it's more interesting in the first inner layer. Then we have another path and another path. Obviously, there is a, a change in the planes. All these bits and pieces are creating heat and hopefully will appear in the temperature map. Oh, instead of 60 degree, we've got 150 degree. All the plots are done, 150 degree, total power 8.5 watts. The board isn't that big, five centimeters. And let's have a look at the results. Okay, this is the a view of the top layer. Components, trace, 
trace obviously is underneath the component. First inner layer. Bottom layer. The interesting stuff is that the maximum temperature you see with the infrared camera is more or less 130. But the true maximum temperature of 145 is in some inner layer. And that would not be detected by the infrared camera. There's another way to watch the results. It's a more interactive way where you have access to the min-max values in the legend. What I like is this color palette, which is more or less like an infrared camera. Here we see this trace glowing. and so on. A third way of reading results, it's a report file. The report file starts with repeating your input data and now the results. For example, the voltage drop in our net sys 5 volt. We have a maximum potential value of 0.135 volt and a minimum value of minus 0.35 volt, which means the total voltage drop is around 0.5 volts. And the next section contains the thermal results. This is the central temperature and the mean temperature of a component and almost all of the components are quite heated by our three um, components with, with the watts. There are more options to bring in more physics into the simulation, transient simulations, um, electric dependent simulations and so on, but that's not the scope of this introductory video. So I thank you for watching and try it yourself. Goodbye.